You're plying your yarn and one of your singles runs out, but there's still plenty of singles left on the other bobbin. So what do you do? Assuming that you don't want to waste that leftover yarn, there are a few different ways to handle this. In this video, I'll show you the technique that I prefer to use, which is plying bracelets. We'll look at a couple of different methods and show not only how to wind them, but also how to manage them while you're plying. We'll also talk about some tools that you can use instead, and if you stick around, I'll give you a really important tip that I can't believe more people don't know. I'm Bex, and this is a channel all about spinning, knitting, and occasionally some other crafty stuff. If you find this video useful, please do share it, hit the like button, and subscribe to help the channel grow. You might hear this method referred to as Andean plying, but it's not the primary technique that spinners of the Andes actually use to ply yarn, it's just a yarn management trick that's used to deal with one spindle running out of yarn before the other when you're plying, so I'm just going to be calling them plying bracelets. If you're interested in where the name Andean plying originated and why it's worth trying to stop using that term, I've left details in the description and the pinned comment on this video. So we've run out of yarn on this bobbin, but this other one's still got lots left. Ideally, we want to use up all of our singles. We could pull all of this yarn off the bobbin to get to the other end, and then essentially just fold the remaining yarn in half, but we would be in a horrible tangled mess in no time. Fortunately, plying bracelets allow me to wrap the leftover singles around my hand in such a way that I can pull from both ends of the single without it getting tangled up. Let me show you my preferred technique. First, we need to take the end of the singles that's still attached to the bobbin on the flyer and just make sure that it's secure and out of our way. I wrap it around something on the wheel to make sure that it doesn't get all tangled up, and then a little bit further along the remaining singles, I tuck it into my watch strap. But you could also just use an elastic band, your cuff or hairband or something like that. You just need to be able to find it again when you finish winding your bracelet. At this point, you need to choose which hand you're going to be wrapping your yarn around. When you ply, one hand is usually at the front, controlling the twist that's going into the yarn, and the other hand is at the back, controlling the singles on the bobbins. You want to be wrapping the yarn around the hand that would normally be at the back. So for me, that's my left hand, but you can use the same techniques whichever hand you're making your plying bracelets on. So we've chosen which hand we're going to use, so now it's time to start the winding process. I start by going clockwise over the back of my middle finger, then bringing it down to the right hand side, around the back of my hand, bringing it up from the left, and this time going anti-clockwise around the back of my middle finger, down to the left hand side of my palm, round the back of my hand, and I just repeat that motion over and over again. If you find it difficult to remember which way you should go, I always just think about reversing direction every time I get to my middle finger. It'll definitely take a while to get used to the motion of winding, but soon enough it's going to become second nature. If you find it easier, you can try wrapping the yarn in the opposite direction to what I've demonstrated here. As long as you're consistent, it will work out absolutely fine. When I've finished, I just keep hold of the other end of the yarn, slip the yarn off my hand and onto my wrist, and then pop the loose end of the singles in between the plies and just keep plying until I've used it all up. When you get close to the end, you're gonna find that you've basically got a folded loop of yarn that you're going to be able to ply right the way to the end. Whenever I'm plying from this method, I find it feeds more smoothly if I rotate that bracelet around my wrist so that the bump that was on the palm side is now on the back, and then I just keep my hand pointing in the direction of the orifice, and it usually comes off really smoothly. I wouldn't necessarily recommend trying to ply a whole 100 gram or 4 ounce skein using plying bracelets. It gets pretty unwieldy for large quantities, but it's perfect for smaller amounts. 
And now for that really important tip that I mentioned. I see posts on social media all the time where people have wound an enormous amount of yarn onto their hands and they're in danger of cutting off the circulation in their middle finger. There is no need to get to that point. Once you get to a stage where it's starting to tighten up a bit, you can just stop when you get back to your starting point, then slip the yarn off your middle finger and onto your wrist, then just start the process all over again. You can keep doing this until you either run out of yarn or you run out of space on your arm. There are also plying bracelet tools that you can buy or you can make your own makeshift tool using a book and a stick of some kind. I've got instructions on that coming up. Also, once you've got your plying bracelet, you don't need to keep it on your wrist all the time, which is useful to know because Sod's Law dictates that you'll need to visit the bathroom or someone will ring your doorbell just as you settle down to ply. So if you do need to leave your wheel, just pop something in there to keep the middle of the bracelet open and then just pop it back onto your wrist when you're ready to start again. You can use this same technique whether you're spinning two or more plies, although if it is more than two, you will inevitably have some waste. Now this is your warning. What I've covered so far is what I consider to be the essential information that you need for a positive experience with plying bracelets. But there are a few other things that I wanted to cover, including two more hand winding methods, the book method, which is useful if you don't want to or can't use your hands you wind onto, plus what's really going on with your yarn when you make a plying bracelet. If you have got everything that you need to know at this point and you want to avoid overwhelm, please feel free to stop watching this video now, even though the YouTube algorithm would prefer that you watch until the end. If you're still with me, the second method is simpler to remember and it's also a bit easier to figure out where you left off if you get interrupted, but it always ends up being tighter around my middle finger no matter how hard I try to keep it loose. To do this one, you go clockwise around the back of your middle finger, then cross over to the left, go around the back of your hand, round to the right, and just continue in the same direction, just following the same path of the yarn over and over again. If you do find that you're having problems with that method giving you a really tight wrap around your middle finger, you can try bending your finger and wrapping above the joint instead. Although it will still tighten up, when you push it down the finger it will be nice and loose. With this method, I always find that when I'm plying, the yarn keeps getting caught on the bump where it went over my middle finger, and I often find that I have to sort of move my hand backwards and forwards through the loop that it creates. It also has a bit of a habit of tightening around my wrist as I ply, which just kind of exacerbates that problem. So for me, it's just not as smooth to ply from as the first method, but maybe there's just a trick that I haven't discovered yet. So let me know in the comments if that's the case. Method three is the butterfly method. Structurally, this is exactly the same as method two, but it might be even easier to wind. You just wind the yarn in a figure of eight between your thumb and your little finger. Then make one of the loops bigger and slip that bigger loop onto your wrist. Method four is the book method. It's similar in structure to method one, but it keeps your hands free, so it might be convenient if interruptions are likely. Take a book and insert a ruler, pencil, double pointed needle or some other stick like object inside the book so that it protrudes at right angles out of the long edge. Tuck the tail of the yarn inside the book and bring the yarn up and around the back of your stick clockwise. Then bring the yarn down to the spine, around to the back of the book 
and wrap it clockwise around the stick, then back down to the spine and wrap again. And just keep following that path. When you've finished, slide the stick out of the book, keeping the loop of yarn open with your hand. When the loop is secure, you can then just remove the yarn from the stick. You might need to experiment to find the right size book for your wrists. And to be honest, if I needed to wind a lot of yarn, I would probably just prefer to use method one. So what's actually happening when you make a plying bracelet using these methods? Let's take a bracelet of commercial yarn that I wound using method one. Over my middle finger, it's like a series of loops that are stacked on top of each other. If I take it off and pull it from either side of the bracelet, you can see that we've actually just been winding a long loop that's folded in half. Because this yarn doesn't have any active twist, it pulled apart fairly easily, but that's not likely to happen by accident, especially with hand-spun singles, because the twist will keep everything much more secure. But just be a little bit careful to keep it intact, especially if you're using singles that have been resting for a while and don't have any active twist in them. The book method also creates this same kind of loop. The plying bracelet tools that you can buy use exactly the same action as this method, but the difference is that they have pieces that replicate the sides of your hands and also your middle finger. The single loop and butterfly methods work in a different way. If I pull this one apart, you'll see that it's really just one short loop, which kind of begs the question, why not just wrap it around my hand, making sure to include my thumb so that it's big enough to go over my wrist? The answer is that the point where the loop crosses keeps the yarn organised. My opinion is that this method is actually harder for me to ply from, but your experience might vary, so give these different methods a go and see what you think. Let me know in the comments what your favourite options are. So I hope this video was useful. Thank you so much for watching. If it was helpful, then I would really appreciate it if you gave it a like, comment and subscribe. All of those things really, really help the channel out. There will be a couple of suggestions of videos to watch next coming up. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching and I will see you again very soon.